look like something out of a nightmare creeping in the dark with venomous stingers raised, but scorpions are far more than just fearsome creatures. In the hidden corners of China's agricultural world, these arachnids are being farmed by the millions not for danger, but for profit. Scorpions once seen solely as a threat are now emerging as a high-value asset in medicine, food, and even cosmetics. Welcome to AgroWorks USA, the channel where we uncover the untold stories of modern farming. Today, we're venturing into one of the world's most astonishing agricultural niches, the booming industry of scorpion farming. You'll discover how these intimidating animals are bred, raised, and harvested with scientific precision. From venom used in groundbreaking medical treatments to their unexpected role as a delicacy in street food culture, scorpions are proving their worth in surprising ways. But this isn't just about money. We'll also explore the ethical, ecological, and logistical complexities behind breeding such a unique and dangerous species on a massive scale. So if you're curious about how a creature many fear has become a pillar of rural income in biopharmaceutical innovation, stay with us. This is a story that flips fear on its head and finds value where few dare to look. If you enjoy surprising journeys like this, don't forget to like and subscribe to AgroWorks USA and ring the bell so you never miss our next deep dive into the world of farming. Scorpions have one of the most fascinating and delicate reproductive cycles in the arthropod world. Unlike many insects that lay hundreds of eggs and abandon them, scorpions give live birth a rarity among invertebrates and exhibit surprising maternal care. Female scorpions can carry their young for several months depending on the species and environmental conditions. Once born, a single brood can contain anywhere from 20 to 80 juveniles. These newborn scorpions are soft, pale, and extremely vulnerable. Immediately after birth, they climb onto their mother's back where they remain until they complete their first molt, usually within one to two weeks. During this time, the mother protects them from environmental threats and even from one another as scorpions are known for cannibalistic tendencies in crowded conditions. To ensure survival breeders separate mothers and their offspring into individual containers, allowing precise monitoring of each juvenile's health and growth. After their first molt baby scorpions are relocated to independent rearing environments where they begin to feed and develop on their own. It takes about six months for young scorpions to reach a size suitable for preliminary separation and nearly one to two years to fully mature. At adulthood, they are ready for either venom extraction or reproduction marking the start of a new breeding cycle. This complex life cycle demands both patience and detailed knowledge making scorpion farming a highly specialized venture that blends natural instinct with controlled precision. It's a reminder that even the most fearsome creatures begin life as fragile dependents requiring care strategy and deep respect. Scorpion farming may sound like something out of a sci-fi novel, but in reality it requires a highly controlled and science-backed environment to ensure both safety and productivity. As cold-blooded creatures, scorpions are extremely sensitive to fluctuations in temperature and humidity. They thrive best in warm, arid environments conditions that closely mimic their natural desert habitats. For this reason, most farms maintain a dry climate-controlled space, avoiding excess moisture to prevent fungal infections and stress-induced behavior. Breeding enclosures are typically small, dark, and made of breathable materials. These microhabitats provide hiding spots and reduce aggression among individuals. Farmers often separate young scorpions or pregnant females to prevent cannibalism, a common issue in crowded or poorly managed farms. When it comes to diet, scorpions are surprisingly low maintenance. Their menu mainly consists of soft-bodied insects, such as mealworms, maggots, fly larvae, and small earthworms. They eat infrequently just once every five to seven days and usually require only one or two prey items per meal. However, maintaining a consistent and abundant feed supply is critical, especially in large-scale operations. Many farms even cultivate their own feeder insects to reduce costs and ensure quality. Proper lighting cycles and minimal human disturbance are also essential to keeping stress levels low and molting cycles healthy. Together, these carefully managed conditions not only enhance scorpion survival rates, but also optimize venom production and reproduction key factors in making scorpion farming a viable and sustainable industry. 
What do you think is the biggest challenge in farming scorpions? Would you ever visit a scorpion farm if you had the chance? Type 1 if you're intrigued by the idea or share your thoughts with me in the comments below. I'd love to hear your perspective. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any future adventures from AgroWorks USA. Harvesting scorpion venom is both a delicate science and a high-stakes enterprise often referred to as milking liquid gold. Venom is extracted primarily for use in pharmaceutical research, where its complex cocktail of neurotoxins and peptides shows promise in treating chronic pain, epilepsy, arthritis, and even cancer. With a global market value estimated in the billions, a single gram of purified scorpion venom can fetch as much as $8,000. The extraction process involves applying a small electrical stimulus, commonly called an STI charge to the scorpion's tail, prompting it to release one or two drops of venom. This milky white fluid is collected using glass capillaries or specialized containers and immediately stored under controlled conditions to preserve its biochemical integrity. On average, a mature scorpion can produce about two milligrams of venom per day. To ensure quality and animal welfare, the process is limited to once every few days and conducted in sterile, low-stress environments. Unlike earlier, more harmful methods, modern techniques are designed to avoid injury or overexertion. Farms often breed specific species known for their high venom yield and medical efficacy, such as Mesobuthus martensi. Once collected, the venom is freeze-dried and sent to laboratories for further refinement. Scientists isolate individual peptides with therapeutic potential, paving the way for cutting-edge treatments. In this sense, scorpion farms are more than agricultural ventures. They are living biolabs contributing to the future of medicine, one drop at a time. While scorpions are best known for their venom, they have also made their way into the culinary world, especially in parts of Asia, where adventurous dining and traditional remedies intersect. In countries like China and Thailand, Scorpions are considered both a delicacy and a novelty often served fried on skewers or incorporated into herbal soups and rice dishes. Their appeal lies not only in their exotic nature, but also in their nutritional value. Scorpions are high in protein, low in fat, and packed with micronutrients such as iron, zinc, and magnesium. Once the venom is neutralized through cooking, they become entirely safe to eat. Their crunchy texture and mild flavor, some liken it to shrimp or soft-shell crab, make them surprisingly palatable for first-time tasters. To meet rising demand from tourists and health-conscious consumers, scorpion farms now include food-grade harvesting in their business models. Once they reach the ideal size, mature scorpions are selected cleaned and processed under hygienic conditions. Some are flash-frozen and exported to gourmet markets, while others are dried for traditional medicine or packaged as novelty snacks. Despite their intimidating appearance, scorpions have carved out a niche in the global food scene. Their unique combination of taste, nutritional value, and cultural intrigue has transformed them from feared predators into premium proteins, proving that sometimes the most unlikely creatures make the biggest impact on our plates. Have you ever tried eating scorpions? What was your experience like? Drop a comment and let me know. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on this bold culinary choice. Scorpion farming is no longer just a curiosity, it's a booming niche industry with significant economic potential. In China, where large-scale breeding operations have become increasingly sophisticated, scorpions are generating millions of dollars annually through the sale of venom medicinal products and gourmet food. Their dual-purpose value allows farmers to diversify income streams, making the species one of the most profitable exotic livestock in the region. The venom alone used in pharmaceutical research and traditional Chinese medicine can sell for thousands of dollars per gram. This has encouraged a surge of investment into venom extraction technologies, training programs, and quality control protocols. Meanwhile, dried scorpions and food-grade products are being exported to international markets, including specialty restaurants and herbal remedy retailers. Beyond direct profits, scorpion farming supports job creation across the supply chain from breeders and venom technicians to processors and exporters. It also attracts government interest in rural development initiatives, with some provinces offering grants or infrastructure support to scorpion farm startups. As global interest in alternative medicine and exotic cuisine grows, so does the economic footprint of this once-feared arachnid. 
With the right investment regulation and innovation, Scorpion Farming stands poised to become a sustainable and lucrative pillar in the future of agricultural entrepreneurship. Compared to traditional livestock operations, Scorpion Farming has a relatively low environmental footprint. These arachnids require minimal space-consumed small quantities of food, like mealworms or fly larvae, and thrive in dry and closed environments. This makes them ideal for indoor or semi-controlled setups that use fewer natural resources, such as water feed and land, than poultry or cattle farms. Because scorpions are cold-blooded and low-metabolism creatures, they don't generate significant waste or require constant heating or ventilation. Breeding facilities often rely on natural lighting and simple insulation to maintain suitable conditions. In regions with hot arid climates, these traits reduce the need for energy-intensive systems, helping lower carbon emissions. However, environmental concerns can arise if farms are scaled too quickly or operate without proper oversight. Overcrowding poor waste management and the overuse of insect feed can create hygiene risks and impacts surrounding soil quality. Additionally, releasing non-native scorpion species into the wild intentionally or accidentally may threaten local biodiversity. To ensure sustainability best practices in scorpion farming include controlled breeding integrated pest management and eco-friendly disposal methods. When managed responsibly, scorpion farming offers an environmentally viable alternative to more intensive forms of animal agriculture. What about you? Do you think scorpion farming is more eco-friendly compared to other forms of livestock production? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to join AgroWorks USA on our upcoming journeys into the world of farming and food. While scorpions may not evoke much sympathy, ethical questions still loom large as farming practices expand. Their emotionless appearance and silent nature often mask the fact that these animals are still sentient, capable of experiencing stress, especially under repetitive or invasive farming conditions. Electric stimulation. The primary method for venom extraction raises concerns about animal welfare. Though it doesn't leave visible injuries, repeated procedures may cause distress over time. In high-density farming, the lack of space sanitation and natural behaviors only adds to ethical challenges. Another key concern is purpose. Scorpions are increasingly bred not just for medicine, but for novelty food markets and commercial curiosity. Is it justifiable to raise and harvest millions of these creatures primarily for profit with little regard for their well-being? Responsible farming should include more humane venom collection protocols, better housing conditions, and clear ethical standards. Education and regulation play vital roles in shaping industry norms and consumer expectations. Ultimately, as scorpion-based products become more mainstream, the ethical framework behind their production must evolve as well, ensuring that even the smallest, most misunderstood creatures are treated with care and respect. Once feared as deadly desert dwellers, scorpions are now quietly reshaping the landscape of modern agriculture. In China and beyond, these intimidating arthropods have found new roles as both a source of high-value venom for cutting-edge medicine and a novel delicacy in adventurous culinary scenes. It's a remarkable transformation from menace to multi-million dollar commodity. Yet as with any booming industry, the rise of scorpion farming comes with deeper questions. How do we balance economic ambition with the ethical treatment of creatures many consider frightening but still sentient? Can this industry grow without harming delicate ecosystems or compromising safety standards in venom extraction? These are the challenges we must navigate as science, commerce, and nature collide in unexpected ways. What's clear is that the scorpion's journey from the shadows to the spotlight is far from over. As consumers, researchers, and farmers explore its full potential, the choices we make will define not only the future of this niche industry, but also our values around animal welfare, sustainable innovation, and respect for even the most unlikely of life forms. So what's your take? Are you intrigued or unsettled by the idea of scorpion farms? Let us know in the comments. And if you're fascinated by the hidden stories behind agriculture's most surprising ventures, give this video a like, subscribe to AgriWorks USA, and turn on notifications to follow us into even more unexpected corners of the farming world. Thanks for watching and stay curious.